you for watching. I'm Taryn Lindsay. And I'm Victoria Morales. Today's topic is sexual orientation. Our team broke the research into four main questions. Stay tuned to hear more. Fifty surveys were collected with a general age range of 17 to 76 on the WNMU campus. The on-screen graph summarizes the results. 44% of students believe that ages 18 through 24 was an accept acceptable age to choose their sexual orientation. 34% believe that ages 11 through 17 was more acceptable. In the year 1970, the average age of people coming out was around 20 years old. By the year 2000, the average age was as young as 14 years old. The same journal of research on adolescence describes this time period as transformative and profound. One last statistic for you. 40% of homeless teens in the U.S. were thrown out by their parents after coming out. 42% report their communities are not accepting of the LGBTQIA community. Is the 21st century more accepting than it was 50 years ago? 16 students said yes and 34 said no. 34% of Americans report they would be upset if they found out their child were homosexual. Data from the U.S. sample suggests that many not accepting parents do become more accepting and supportive over time. Does family influence sexual orientation decisions? 26 students from our survey answered no, while 24 answered yes. Journal of Research on Adolescence agrees with those who answered yes. The relationship between a parent and a child heavily determines how the individual progress through their decisions. Acceptance from the family positively influences self-esteem and self-regulation. And if the family does not accept their child coming out? Research shows that among other things, depression, self-injury, and suicidal ideation. The last question in our survey, is sexual orientation linked to genetics? According to ID Times, genetics account for about 20 to 30 percent of our sexuality. ScienceMag.org revealed that there are five genetic markers linked to sexual orientation. One is in women, two is in men, and two is shared between both men and women. Now, our reporters Michaela Hinton and Ellen Gonzalez have interviewed three individuals using the same questions from our survey. Here are those interviews now. Good afternoon, I am Michaela Hinton with Mustang News, and today I am here with Miss Rachel Richter. So if you yeah. want to go ahead and introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so I'll work at Western New Mexico University. I teach in our online MSW program, and I actually live in Dayton, Ohio. Thank you for mm -hmm. being here. So the first question, in your opinion, is sexual orientation genetically determined or a choice made by the individual? I believe it's genetic. According to S. Mark Breedlove, with the archives of sexual behavior with the National Library of Medicine, lesbians on average were exposed to greater prenatal androgen than were straight women while in utero. So it is actually genetic. Does the opinion of others, such as family members or friends, alter or influence a person's sexual orientation? Well, I'm not sure that's a yes or no question. I, I don't think that it alters it because I believe it's genetic. But I do think that sometimes people make choices about whether or not to act on what they believe is, is their orientation and their behavior because of their concern about how their family and friends will accept that. What age do you think it is acceptable to be able to come out and specify your orientation? Well, I personally think that it should be acceptable whenever you notice that, and that is different for everybody. So do you think for yeah. a four-year-old, it would be appropriate for them to identif start identifying as um, lesbian or queer? Yes, I, I think with anything on an LGBTQIA spectrum, that a, if a child has an, an interest in something or feels they're, you know, a different gender or what, whatever might be the case. I, I think we should be raising our children to allow them to say at any given time, you know, who they are, what they are, um, who they're attracted to, that sort of thing. I mean, it obviously would be age appropriate. So a four-year-old is not going to have the same sexual, you know, feelings that an adult would have, but they prefer to be around 
certain people because they feel an attraction of some sort to them, whatever that might be. I think they should be able to say that. Do you think society is more accepting nowadays of different sexual orientations? I think generally, yes. Um, I will qualify that by saying I think it, it depends on what sector of society you're talking about. I think there's a lot of variation with that. So okay. unfortunately, I think there, there are still some, some groups of people who definitely do not feel any more accepting of that now than, than they did years ago and, and probably never will because of their particular characteristics. Today, I'm also with Anissa Maese. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Anissa Amayese. I am 20 years old and I'm currently finishing up my sophomore year in college. I am majoring in criminal justice with a minor in criminal psychology and in my free time I work as a veterinary technician. Perfect. In your opinion, is sexual orientation genetically determined or a choice made by the individual? I think sexual orientation is completely based off um, the individual, the individual choice. Um, I do not think it has anything to do with genetics. I think a lot of it has to do with upbringing, the surroundings, um, personal beliefs, you know, just things that influence that. Um, so yeah, I do feel like each choice is individually made, not by genetics. Okay. So then would it interest you to know that S. Mark Breedlove with the Archives of Sexual Behavior with the National Library of Medicine found that lesbians on average were exposed to greater prenatal androgen or testosterone that straight, than straight women were? No, I didn't know that. So that is pretty interesting. And I wonder what factors into that. Um, and just genuinely how that, you know, how the outcome happens. So that'd be something I'd like to look a little bit more into. Okay. Does the opinion of others, such as family members or friends, alter or influence a person's sexual orientation? I do think that um, opinions of family members and friends and any outside source, actually, in this case, um, does influence the sexual orientation of an individual, I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't think it determines it most of the time, but I think it really does like to influence um, that choice. I think if you're not being, I guess, applauded or, you know, you're not receiving positive feedback because of a choice you're choosing to make, that is going to influence you in the end. Okay. At what age is it acceptable to choose sexual orientation? I think I'm, personally, I think I'd choose between like the 18 to 24 range, I believe that was an option. Um, I don't know, I just think in college, personally, this is just personal opinion, I think in, in college, that's where you really get away from mom and dad, you get away from, you know, all of that home action, and you really get to explore yourself by yourself. Um, and I really think that is kind of what sets forward sexual orientation, you know, I hate to use the phrase experimenting, because that's just, I personally don't like that phrase. But I think ultimately that's what it comes down to. You just try, you try what you try and you like what you like. And I believe that's an age where you can make a full knowledgeable decision. Hmm. And lastly, is society more accepting of different sexual orientations? I think we are becoming more accepting. I hate to say that some places and some people are never going to be accepting of it. And, you know, whether that's the way they were raised, whether that's what they believe, you know, morals, ethical morals, everything like that. I just think some people are never going to accept it, but I do think a large majority of society today is becoming more accepting of it. And we're seeing, you know, celebrities coming out. We're seeing these top tier people that are coming out and people are saying like, oh, wow, like this is normal. This is okay. And I think when it comes down to it, people are finally realizing that you love who you love. And that's, that's all it is. Perfect. Hello, I'm Ellen Gonzalez, and I'm with WNMU News, and today we have a very special guest, Mr. Toby Soderberg, and Toby, if you'll just introduce yourself real quick. Sure thing. Um, like I said, I'm Toby Soderberg. Um, I am an elementary school principal in Bibby, New Mexico, and then also I am finishing up my doctoral degree at New Mexico State University, where um, my research was involved with LGBTQ youth in public education. Well, welcome. In your opinion, is sexual orientation genetically determined or a choice made by the individual? Uh, I, in my opinion, I think it's a choice made by the individual. I don't think it's anything that you're, you're born with, but 
you know, through what you're modeled after and what you see. And also just as you grow and experience things, it changes what you're um, interested in uh, as sexual attraction. Does the opinion of others such as family members or friends alter or influence a person's sexual orientation? I don't know that in all cases it alters. It could in some person, people's cases. Um, I would definitely say it does influence. Um, and usually I would say if it is a person that is identifying as LGBTQ, it probably influences them to actually stay in the closet and not come out um, earlier on. So what age do you think it's acceptable to choose your sexual orientation? This one, I, I don't know that there's a specific age. Um, I think it's actually when it's just developmentally appropriate for you because everybody develops differently um, and at different stages. And so I think really it's, it's up to the individual. And then also I think it happens in stages more so. Um, it's much more fluid and it, it could start off one thing and then end up changing into something else. I think society is more accepting of different sexual orientations. Now, I think they are just because there's a lot more representation on TV, um, in celebrities and that kind of thing, that, that it's out there a little bit more than what it used to be, um, especially like when I was younger. Um, however, I do think that it still falls within the category of being um, heteronormative, so living in a very um, just, you know, male-female kind of based world instead of just taking away those binary constraints. Team fact real quick. Um, it usually takes somebody about 18 months to fully accept that a person is in the LGBTQ community. Does this end it and start from the beginning? You'll be in a muse. <laughs> and then I started laughing. Okay. I think I'm recording. 30%. <laughs> Student says today's se search engine. <laughs> for those who are unaware, the LGBTQIA stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, transgendered, queer or questioning, and intersex and asexual. 